there are three fundamental constructs in most high-level procedural programming languages such as VB.NET and they are sequence, selection and iteration. In this video I'm going to introduce selection. That means executing one block of code or another depending on the outcome of a test. One way we can do this is using the IF statement. Let's start with a simple user interface. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, get in the habit of naming your form controls as you place them on the form. I'm going to ask the user what country they come from, and then give them an appropriate greeting. I'll capture the input from the form by assigning it to a variable. And now I'm going to use an if statement to test the contents of that variable. If the country is equal to Australia, then I'm going to output the message G'day mate. I want you to notice that I'm using the equal sign to check if two things are equal. Whereas here, I'm using the equal sign to assign something to a variable. In some programming languages, you'll use a slightly different approach. For example, in Python, if you were checking for equality, you would use two equal signs. In VB, a single equal sign can be used either for checking or for assignment. So let's try it out. If I input Australia, I get the Australian greeting. If I input something else, nothing at all. That doesn't mean my code isn't working, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. This is what we call a one-line if statement. I can execute one command depending on the outcome of the test. But if I want to execute multiple commands depending on the outcome of a test, I'm going to use a block if statement. I've moved that command to the next line down. Visual Studio has automatically added an end if. And now, between the if and the end if, I can have as many commands as I like. So watch what happens now. G'day mate. Good on ya. No worries. If I don't type Australia, if I type something else, nothing happens at all. Now a word of warning, if I put something after the word then, that's a syntax error. End if must be preceded by a matching if. This line of code is complete, it's syntactically correct. However, you can't have an end if on its own. If you're going to use a block if, there should be nothing after the word then. If there's nothing after the word then, and I forget to use end if, again, I've got a syntax error. If must end with a matching end if. So you have a choice. You can either use a block if or a one line if, but whichever one you use, you have to use it correctly. When it comes to a block if, I can have multiple else if clauses as part of it like this. Else if country equals France, bonjour, comment allez-vous? Let's try it out. Those are my three Australian greetings. And if the country is France, bonjour, comment allez-vous? However, if I enter something which isn't France and isn't Australia, nothing. Let's include another else if. Else 
else if country equals Japan, konnichiwa, chousi wadu desuka. I think I pronounced that correctly. Let's try it out now. And there are my Japanese messages. I can have as many else if clauses as I like in a block if statement, and I can finish with a single else clause. If I don't type Australia, France or Japan, then it will say, hello there, I hope you are well. So everybody gets something. Now, just a small word of warning. The tests that you perform with an if statement are case sensitive. Watch what happens if I type Australia in lower case. The block of code in the else clause is executing because I didn't use a capital A. I can remove the case sensitivity of this test by converting the contents of the variable st country into uppercase, like this. I'm saying take the content of st country, convert it to uppercase, and then put the uppercase version of it back into the variable, overwriting the original contents of that variable. And now I'm going to check to see if that is equal to this. It doesn't matter what type of case I use when I'm typing in the country. I've removed the case sensitivity from the test. Let's just step through this to be sure what's going on. I'll put a breakpoint on the procedure. So I've typed in lowercase Australia. That's what I've captured into this variable and then I've converted it to uppercase Australia. So I'm asking if uppercase Australia is equal to uppercase Australia. And notice how execution has passed to the end of the if block. Because the Australian greetings have been displayed, there's no need to perform these other tests. One final thing to say. I've converted the user's input into uppercase, and I might not want to leave it in uppercase. Notice this. Once the if block has completed, any code which comes after it then executes. For example, this message box statement. But notice that st country now contains uppercase Japan. I might want to leave it the way it was when it was input by the user. So rather than doing this, which replaces the existing contents of the variable, I'm going to do this. The content of the variable is only being converted to uppercase for the purpose of the test, but I'm not reassigning the uppercase text back into the variable. I'm converting the text to uppercase on the fly, as it were. Watch what happens now. By the time we get to the end of the programme, the contents of the variable are still in their original state. You might like to try writing a similar program yourself. Have a single if block with lots of else if clauses to greet people from different countries.